All right, what's up guys? Good morning. I just got some coffee here with me. Hey guys, ZMD here. Again, in the last video, I talked about the general effects of caffeine use. Well, in this video, I wanna discuss specifically how it can affect your athletic performance. Guys, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, comment, like, Without further ado, let's get to it. So we discussed a lot of points uh, more in depth in the last video, and I'll leave the link somewhere up here. So if you haven't already, check that out first. Anyway, stimulants are considered both physical and cognitive performance enhancers. Beneficial effects for sports include things like improvements in overall energy, the endurance, concentration, reaction time, and overall alertness. Caffeine, interestingly enough, was actually included on the prohibited list from 1980 to 2003, and a urine concentration threshold was used to determine violations in many sports organizations. Nowadays, caffeine is used pretty widely among athletes in many sports and things like uh, distance running, cross country, ski racing, um, and among military personnel to increase alertness and for other purposes. So what exactly does the current literature prove caffeine can do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Caffeine appears to improve exercise capacity in pretty much all ways, including in sustained high intensity interval training, short durations, um, and prolonged exercise as defined as over 90 minutes. In addition, acute caffeine supplementation increases the movement velocity during resistance exercise at all loads. The increases for both peak and mean velocity, suggesting that caffeine is beneficial for things that involve uh, weightlifting, throwing and jumping sports, and any other activities that rely on powerful movement patterns. Uh, always gotta include you CrossFit guys. Let me know your experiences with caffeine in the comments section below and how it has affected your workouts. So it makes sense then that caffeine supplementation is likely to have performance benefits for a wide range of sports, ranging from your long distance endurance events to quick short bursts of field and court sports that involve short intense bursts of activity. In addition to the previous uh, things mentioned, research has demonstrated delayed fatigue as another consequence of caffeine use. Now, in terms of the right amount, there isn't one known dose for optimal performance that has been defined, but it's thought to be no more than probably 200 milligrams for most people. Some studies suggest there may be benefit from consuming small amounts of caffeine both before and throughout your workout and exercise. Hence, you will notice a lot of your pre-workouts have caffeine as a major component in the ingredients. Now coffee, tea, cola, drinks, all these things provide caffeine. Usually it's between 50 to 150 milligrams of caffeine, but some products like caffeine tablets and some energy drinks in particular contain much, much higher amounts. I'll put a chart up here displaying caffeine content of a large number of common beverages and foods in this following table right here. Of note, the actual caffeine content of supplements and beverages can vary substantially from what is stated on packaging and from batch to batch, so it's important to always really keep that in mind. I sometimes use C4 as a pre-workout just because there's some flavors that I really like the taste, and for example, it has 150 milligrams of caffeine. Some other common pre-workouts are listed as follows. I've noticed most of them typically contain anywhere between 50 to 350 milligrams of caffeine per scoop. So try to take a look at the label on the back of your pre-workout the next time you use it and see what you're working with. Of note, the form in which caffeine is taken doesn't appear to alter its effect. So whether you're taking you know, a liquid, a solid, or a powder product, the efficacy isn't compromised. Caffeine is pretty quickly absorbed, uh, usually within 45 minutes, and the peak blood concentrations are seen in an hour of ingestion with the levels and therefore its effects, you know, ranging from three to four hours afterwards. Caffeine has a complex range of actions that it helps with, including stimulation of your adrenaline release, increased cardiac and skeletal muscle inotropy or contraction, decreased perceived effort and fatigue. And that last point is very interesting, so think about that. That means that it's possible to curb a lot of your perception or reduce the effort or pain in your workouts, allowing you to possibly get in those extra couple of reps. Now, as a side note, never sacrifice form for extra reps because I don't want you getting injured. Now, what about dehydration? Can't caffeine make you dehydrated? This was a question I actually had, and after some research, I found that per this research article, 
Moderate daily caffeine intake doesn't appear to actually cause dehydration as was once thought, but I'm not completely sure on this and I think we may need more evidence to really be definitive on this. The effects of caffeine supplementation are variable. There's people who don't respond at all and there's some people who will have just one teaspoon and boom, they're, you know, they're up and jumping all over the walls. So it's really important that you find what kind of dosage is optimal for you and you don't get any of the unwanted side effects such as irritability, tremors, insomnia, fast heart rate, uh, even at low doses. So my suggestion is, is that it's best to start low. Again, see what works for you. And it's important to note that one other thing to consider is that after repeated use, tolerance is pretty common. And so you may end up needing more and more caffeine to achieve the same results that you were getting in the past. For that reason, you definitely don't want to take more than is actually completely necessary. So I suggest again, start at lower doses, try to usually keep it around 200 milligrams at most. And that seems to be an amount that most people tolerate pretty well. Now, rarely some people experience exaggerated side effects such as nervousness or anxiety, and that actually obviously can impair your performance. And for those people, you gotta avoid it. It's really not rocket science science. Caffeine withdrawal can cause things like fatigue, headaches, and those are also things to consider that can be deleterious to the competing athlete. Now, a quick word on energy drinks. The consumption of beverages explicitly for sport began with the drinks that were initially developed to replace the electrolytes and carbs that were lost during your intense physical activity. Those original sports drinks um, were things like Gatorade, Powerade, and they contain usually a low percentage carbohydrate solution with some sugar, a mixture of various electrolytes, and these newer generation of energy drinks include a wide variety of different things like stimulants and other additives, you know, caffeine, taurine, B vitamins, antioxidants, sometimes trace minerals, chemicals like guarana, ginkgo balboa, ginseng, L-carnitine, sucrose, a bunch of stuff, bunch of stuff. Of note, some of these additives can actually interact with prescription medicines. So if you're taking some medications, you wanna to talk to your doctor about potential adverse interactions before consuming a heavy amount of these drinks. Now, the major reported benefit from energy drinks is most likely due to the caffeine component, which we have already discussed. Some may even have some creatine and branch chain amino acids as well, and those can help with recovery and muscle protein synthesis, and we'll talk about that in a different video. Now, the amount of caffeine in an energy drink really ranges widely from approximately 50 to 500 milligrams per can or bottle. Now, my advice is, despite saying in the earlier study that caffeine wasn't found to be a potent diuretic, meaning it makes you pee more and makes you dehydrated, energy beverages should not be used for the purpose of rehydration because they contain a bunch of other things, a bunch of other chemicals, in addition to just the caffeine. And a lot of these things can actually cause you to potentially pee more. And so leave the rehydration component to the OG, that is water, H2O. One other major ingredient often goes unnoticed and that is something known as sugar. Some drinks contain like eight to 10 teaspoons of sugar and now you are talking you should be thinking weight gain, you should be thinking blood pressure and diabetes, and you should definitely be on the lookout for that. I've said it before, young men appear to be the primary market, um, and it's very common in military personnel as well to consume large amounts of energy drinks to assist with their alertness and to reduce fatigue. Now, the recommended daily dose of energy beverages is no more than 500 milliliters, um, although this depends a lot on the ingredients. Despite this, Sports drinks enthusiasts routinely drink a whole lot more and where you really run into trouble is when you start blindly combining them with other supplements or things like alcohol, which can be particularly dangerous. Opinions among experts differ about the effectiveness and safety of combining energy drinks with exercise to increase fat loss, but personally I think that you should see what feels safe to you and experiment by starting out with lower amounts and seeing how you personally respond to increasing your caffeine dose. But definitely that's something that depends on so many things like your general medical profile and you should probably go over all this diligently with your doctor. So just as a recap of some of the potential common adverse effects of energy beverages may be due to caffeine or other stimulants or other ingredients may include things like elevated blood pressure, or hypertension, uh, heart arrhythmias, seizures, uh, insomnia and mood changes. And though not common, there have been reports on the FDA's website suggesting cases of things like heart attacks, convulsions, um, spontaneous abortion, kidney and liver impairment, and psych disorders that are associated with heavy, heavy consumption of energy drinks. But, but relax, again, 
if you're using it in a moderate, reasonable amount, uh, you should be able to avoid most of those things. Um, but I do feel it is a responsibility to notify you that these things do exist. So as always, be careful, use your best judgment with this information, and uh, I hope that helps. So anyways, guys, I really hope that you learned something in this video. Be sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section below, and let me know your experience with caffeine and energy drinks. I'll see you in the next video. Remember, keep being a boss.